I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 63, All-Star Baseball 99. Released in 1998, this game was developed by Iguana Entertainment and published by Acclaim. Back to sports, and this time it's baseball again. I've never played this series, but I've had a few people mention they're looking forward to it in my chat. I'm hoping it's not miserable like All-Star Tennis was, but this had two sequels on the N64, so I feel like it's going to be a better time. So if you're not familiar, the rule I set for myself with sports games is I have to beat the main championship of that particular sport, and I can do it in the quickest way the game allows. This is to cut down on the repetitiveness of playing the computer in the same game over and over again. This particular game allows us to start a playthrough directly at the World Series and I get to pick both teams who are in it. I decided to go as the Yankees because they have a ton of money and usually buy the best players. My opponent? The Montreal Expos. I feel like this is a pretty even matchup, you know? The Yankees had some big names like Chuck Knobloch, Derek Jeter, Paul O'Neill, Bernie Williams, Tino Martinez, Chili Davis, Tim Raines, Scott Brocious, Joe Girardi, and Andy Pettit pitching. The Expos, well, they had Vladimir Guerrero who was amazing. Poor dude was on a miserable team. When an inning starts, it has you throw warm-up pitches, which I guess is realistic, but it sure gets old after playing for a while. The first thing I immediately noticed about this game is just how good the graphics are. Like, they're honestly fantastic. You could probably convince a lot of people that this is a GameCube game. Now into the gameplay. It's your standard baseball game, similar to the others at the time. You select which pitch to throw with the C buttons, then aim it with the joystick and throw. They hide the indicator showing where you're pitching in order to avoid screen watching, but that makes it kind of hard to know where you're throwing. You kind of get used to it after a while though. The bottom right shows hot and cold zones for the current batter, so you want to pitch it where their zone is blue or clear. My first inning fielding went pretty smooth. They got a hit, but no run scored. Batting is about what you'd expect. The opponent pitches the ball, you move the yellow crosshair onto it and swing at the right time. It can be incredibly hard to move it to the correct spot in time, but the game does highlight one of the corners of the strike zone to let you know which quadrant the ball is being pitched to, so that helps out a bit. You still have to be good to hit the ball though, which I was not, and I got three outs right away. Later on in the second inning, disaster struck. The Expos got a home run against me. How does this happen? I'm the Yankees. I've got the money to buy all the best players. Come on. Then a few at-bats later, they got a deep drive to the outfield to get another runner home. Not looking good for the Yankees. However, just when you think they're out of it, the great Chili Davis gets a two-run homer in the bottom of the second inning. There's a drive way back. Oh! Let's go, Chili Davis, my dude over 500 feet, wow. You might have noticed the aimer for batting that time was much smaller. You can press B while batting to toggle a power swing, although it's much harder to hit the ball this way. Later on in the fourth inning, Paul O'Neill gets yet another home run for the Yankees. Now they're winning. Then we're in the top of the sixth inning with a man on second. The Expos hit a fly to center field and the guy just jumps for no reason? The ball went right past and that was a run in. Not sure if we count that as an error or what. In the same inning, a drive to right field leaves the bases loaded for Andy Pettit and the Yankees. Horrible situation to be in. Luckily they hit a grounder to second, getting them out of that mess. Tied up 3-3. to three. Now top of the 7th with one out and Paul O'Neill with another drive out of the park, putting the Yankees up by one. In the 7th inning, the Yankees bring in closer Mariano Rivera. This is a mechanic you need to keep track of, the pitcher's stamina. Over time throughout the game, your pitcher becomes tired, indicated by the meter above their head. You need to put a backup pitcher in the bullpen to warm them up. Otherwise, when they come in, they'll start with low stamina and just run out of juice immediately. Into the ninth now, Expo's still down by one with two outs. That's when FD Santangelo drives it to right field to tie it up at four. Unbelievable showing by both teams here in game one. The Yankees escape the ninth with the score still tied. We head into the bottom of the ninth when Chili Davis drives it way over the fence on the very first pitch. Walk off home run, you love to see it. The Yankees took game one five to four. Wow, the fans got a great showing from that one. If you're not familiar with the MLB, the World Series is a seven game series, so we've got to win four games to win the title. The audio during a game, it's okay. There's two commentators who have a few lines they say, as well as who's coming up to bat. And you hear music and sounds you'd hear at a typical baseball game in real life. 
Peter on the outside corner for a strike. Two and two. Going into game two, the Yankees had David Cohn pitching. Man, some of these names are so nostalgic for me. He led the Yankees to a 5-3 win, putting them in great position to take the series. In game three, the Expos hit a home run in the bottom of the ninth to hang on and send it into extra innings. Really frustrating, honestly. If the game is still tied in baseball after nine innings of play, you go to extra innings until someone's winning at the end. Thankfully, Joe Girardi hit a drive to right center field, putting the Yankees up, and I took game three. The Expos took game four though, four to one. Real unfortunate to not get the four game sweep, but oh well. Then in game five, the Yankees completely dominated six to three, taking home the World Series with the best team money can buy. It shows a screenshot with fireworks and the scoreboard saying, congratulations, Yankees World Series champs. And that's pretty much it. I decided to check out a few of the cheat codes the game has because they were always fun in these sports titles. There was one for fat skinny mode, one for big head mode, one to make the baseball move like a beach ball, and one to light the ball on fire. And uh, the results? They were amazing. I've never seen a funnier looking player honestly. Like <laughs> where is this dude's neck? He's got to be miserable like that. Man, I miss games having cheats like this. It's just the devs having fun, you know? Anyway, game complete. So there you have it, my journey to beating All-Star Baseball 99. Honestly, this was better than I expected. Despite going for realism with the game, I think it still holds up pretty well. Of all things, you've got to give credit for the amazing graphics. They might even beat out Star Wars Rogue Squadron. The controls were pretty intuitive. Uh, I appreciated there was an announcer and overall this just stands out as one of the better sports titles on the console. That being said, it's still a sports game which just isn't that fun playing against the computer. This would probably be pretty fun to play with your friends though, but we don't do multiplayer in this series. I gave it a 5 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 3 out of 10 for difficulty. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. There are 328 games on the list. We could get anything. We could get another All-Star Baseball, who knows. Uh, but yeah, let's see what it is. Three, two, one, go. 255. What's that? Oh man, it does have 64 in the title. We're playing Robotron, which I know it's like an arcade game, like an old school arcade game. I don't know what this specific one's going to be like, but uh, alrighty then. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.